Greetings. Get out your King James Bibles and turn it to the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Thessalonians was written in the from the city of Athens, which was a city in Greece, one of the major cities. Uh, Athens, if I remember correctly, Athens was the naval power, and then everybody's heard of the Spartans. They were the, the land troops, and that was they were cities in Greece. New Testament was written in Greek, for a reason. And Thessalonica was another city in Greece where Paul had planted a church. And it is because of these books, like Thessalonians, it gives you warnings. It's why the people that hate Paul want to remove his writings from the Bible. So let's take a look. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. Verse 2. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they, unbelievers, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. You see, the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night to the unbelievers. When you read the book of Joel, it tells you the day of the Lord's going to come. There's going to be the sun's going to be darkened. The moon's going to be turned. The blackness, the blood, and the stars are going to fall from the heaven. I mean... The believers are going to notice such things, okay? They're going to notice and say, oh, yeah, the day of the Lord's coming. It's almost here. There's going to be signs in the heavens. But the unbelievers aren't going to know because they don't read the Bible. They don't believe the Holy Scriptures. They don't believe it. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. And for when they shall say peace and safety. See, they is the unbelievers. But verse 4, But ye brethren, oh, now we're talking about believers, but ye brethren are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Why? Because we pay attention and we're going to be looking and we're going to know the signs. That's what this whole Bible series is all about. Ye are all the children of light. Didn't Jesus say he was the light of the world? Oh, yeah. And the children of the day, we are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep. And we're not talking about eight hours of rest. We're talking about spiritual sleep. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch. Watch for what? Watch for the signs in the heavens, the signs of the times. But let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope, of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. See, a lot of people will tell you, oh, well, the tribulation is, is, is God's wrath. Well, you know, the, the destruction of the earth, the plagues, the sea turning to blood, and, and the, the plagues that killed 
you know, a third or a quarter of the people. Yeah, that's God's wrath. We're not appointed to that. But when Satan and his children kill the Christians, that's not God's wrath. That's Satan's wrath. Let's take a look at that real quick. Well, let's take a look at the book of Revelation, chapter 12, and verse 17. And the dragon was wroth. That means angry. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Okay, and then there's people who tell you, oh, well, well, the Jews are the the Jews are the, the seed of the woman. Okay, and they keep the commandments of God. Okay, but do they have the testimony of Jesus Christ? Uh, no. So who are they talking about here? And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and, and, have the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's Christians, people. That's only Christians, period. So who are they talking about here? How about Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4? And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their, head, or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Mm, okay, so there's going to be people beheaded. Of course, the uh, pre-trib rapture people want to convince you that, oh no, you're going to be up in heaven having the marriage supper of the Lamb when all this stuff is going on. Well, if we're up in heaven having dinner with Christ and you know the marriage supper of the land, Lamb while this is going on, doesn't that mean that all the people that are beheaded for Christ that they miss, they miss the marriage supper of the Lamb? I mean, you're going to have, in the middle of a dinner, you're going to have people joining? Really? That doesn't sound right. All right, let's go back to 1 Thessalonians. And we're in chapter 5. Verse 8. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Who died for us? Who died for us? Christ did. Who died for us that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. Do you know that many millions of Christians died for their faith? You, you know, think about it. When you think about it, the pre-trib rapture people will tell you that that's the wrath of God. I, I guess Stephen was under God's wrath, right? Because he died for the faith. I mean, really? You know, Jesus warned us that we would die for the faith. And then they'll say, oh, well, that verse is for the Jews. That doesn't apply to Christians. Really? You ought to take a look at the last hundred years, what happened in communist Russia. When the communists took power, they murdered millions of Christians. But that Holocaust isn't mentioned. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you 
and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn, warn them, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying, I'm sorry, uh, prophecy, prophesyings, yeah. Prove all things, hold fast to that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God, your whole spirit, ah, and I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that interesting? Paul said we had a spirit, a soul, and a body. Hmm. Spirit, soul, body. Spirit, one. Soul, two. Body, three. We're three parts. Body, soul, spirit. Three parts. One man or woman is body, soul, and spirit. Three parts. We were made in God's image, and yet deceivers will tell you, God's not a trinity. Well, you know, trinity's not a Bible word, but Godhead is. And essentially what they're doing is trying to convince you that Jesus is not God in the flesh, that he was just a man, a prophet, uh, you know, a great man. But they deny, they want to deny that he was God in the flesh. You got God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Body, soul, and spirit. Man is three parts. We were made in God's image. So why wouldn't God be three parts? To be one God. We're one man, right? But they don't, but the uh, deceivers, you know, when they, when I point this stuff out, they, they delete my comments. So, because they can't deny it. So, that's how I know they're deceivers. I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you. Who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with an holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. The first epistle to the Thessalonians was written from Athens. So, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Yeah, that sounds like Paul's a deceiver, doesn't it? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you, amen. Yeah, that's that sounds like the words of a deceiver. Uh, you know what? These people that deny Paul, I'm being very sarcastic there, people. The people that deny Paul, I tell you what, I hope the Lord's admonition about those that delete the words of God from the Bible that God would blot their names out of the book of life. I'm kind of hoping that that applies to them because they're, they're deceivers. That's, that's what they are. Paul has a lot of warnings about the end times. And that's why they want us to be ignorant. They don't want us to know what Paul warns us about in the end times. I mean, Peter has some... And, uh, you know, Jesus warned us a lot, uh, like in Matthew 24, but 
Paul has a lot of warnings about the end times. And of course, John, who penned the book of Revelation, he has a lot of warnings. But it's one theme, you know, all it's like a fabric woven together. You know, you can't just rip one part out and expect to be covered. So, all right, well, that's the end of this lesson for 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I believe I have one more lesson on the day of the Lord. And then we're going to start on the day of Christ. And I'm going to try to prove to you that the day of the Lord, the day of Christ, is the same event. I know there's, there's people that will tell you that it's two different things. The day of the Lord is uh, at the end of the tribulation, and the day of Christ is the pre-trib rapture. Well, what they're basically doing is they're denying that Jesus Christ is Lord. And the Bible even and, and they even the Bible even says the day of our Lord Jesus, the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. So all right, well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. That's Jesus, who is the Christ, in his precious name.